This portion of DC's Soap Sanctuary was brought to you by Meow Mix. Tastes so good, cats ask for it by name. Hey guys, it's DC and welcome to the Soap Sanctuary where all soap lovers are welcome, guys. This is my character analysis video for Sunny Corinthos, guys. What prompted this video is this paper I had to write for, uh, for grad school and my classes. Which being which, first semester of grad school is done. Woo, woo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> first semester is done, right? But we had to write this paper where we had to pick a fictional character and we had to pretend they were a client in therapy. So we had to write about where this character was at developmentally and what therapeutic interventions that we would pick for this client. So I chose Sonny Corinthos, right? <laughs> Ultimately, what I wrote for this paper was that he was in Eric's, Eric's stage of generation, generativity versus stagnation, which is pretty much you're contemplating what legacy you left behind. And if you feel like you haven't left anything behind or any legacy behind, you feel like you stagnated. Another thing I looked at was having him on the theory of Lawrence Kohlberg's, I think it's uh, stages of uh, moral development. And I put Sonny at a post-conventional level. Which pretty much what that says is that, like, you know there's a moral code of society, but you follow your own. And you believe the moral code that you follow serves a greater good. And we see that because Sonny's a monster, he kills people for a living, and he's protecting the ports, but he feels like it's okay because he's keeping drugs out of Port Charles. Does that kind of make sense? And then we had to pick two therapeutic invent, uh, interventions. One of them I picked was narrative therapy. I know a lot of people in the mental health field love cognitive behavioral therapy. That's like their thing. And I might come to love it too one day. I might change my mind. Right now, I'm really in love with narrative therapy, which is where you change the story. So let's say if you're a couple going to therapy, you're having issues of communication. You're not the problem. Your partner's not the problem. The problem is the problem. The problem being the communication is the problem. And that's what we're going to solve together. So narrative therapy is externalizing things. So let's say if you're dealing with stresses at work. You're not the problem. Maybe your boss not the problem. Your coworker's not the problem the work itself, or not even the work is a problem, how you're managing the work could be the problem. So management might be the problem, right? You're externalizing it. And that's why I picked for Sunny, right? In a sense. And it was fun doing this. Nikisha told me to send me, uh, send her my paper. I, I actually wanted to, because I need some help in that paper. It was, it was, it was rough, right, that paper. But uh, uh, I didn't get the chance to. Maybe I'll send it to her at some point, though. So I appreciate that she, she did offer the help. I appreciate that. But I feel like for me, like, what prompted this video is that, like I said, the paper and me reflecting on who Sonny was as a character. Because if I'm going to be honest, I did not like Sonny up until Nixon Falls. But here's the caveat. Maurice Bernard didn't even like Sonny up until Nixon Falls. <laughs> he didn't even like Sonny up until Nixon Falls. To me, I always saw Sonny as his hard character, a thug, a thug in a cocktail suit. If you watch Real Housewives of New York City, you get the reference. <laughs> But I saw Sonny as a thug in a cocktail suit, right? Because I feel like Sonny was always this hard character, rough, and we saw softer parts of Sonny with Stone, with Robin, with understanding like the abuse he dealt with his stepfather, his bipolar disorder. But to me, honestly, it wasn't actually until Nixon's Falls that I feel like I saw a more human part of Sonny. Like I feel like I really knew who Sonny was. Even though the ironic part is he didn't, Sonny didn't know who he was in that storyline. That's the ironic part about it, right? Um, but I feel like I see a different depth to him, right? It also kind of reminded me of the Paris, Texas storyline on One Life to Live where Vicky went to Paris, Texas and she worked as a waitress and nobody knew that she was a billionaire. But I think in that storyline, the difference is that Vicky knew who she was. She just needed to get away. Rich people problems. <laughs> She was on her eat, pray, love journey, you know? <laughs> rich people problems. Hashtag rich people problems. <laughs> but for me, I actually connected with Sonny in a different way in Nixon Falls. Because the thing about it is that, like, we saw a vulnerable Sonny. He had to depend on people. He didn't know who he was. We saw a softer side to him. We got to see him navigating the stuff that was going on with Eli, with Lenny, with Phyllis, and Nina. And it, it kind of reminded me, like, it was adventure storylines and soaps. And I think the cool thing about the adventure store lines is that you got to see the characters in a different way. You got to connect, obviously, with the fantasy aspect of it, but you connected to the characters in a different way, which is just something to me that I greatly appreciated, right? I got to see Sonny with a different type of layer. 
we kind of saw that too when Carly had her Jacksonville storyline. That was like her Nixon Falls. You know what I mean? So I, I appreciate that. I appreciate us giving those layers, those depths to those characters because that is something that we really want to be able to see, right? That's why they call them stories because back in the day, we would watch them as viewers day by day and connect with these characters. And so that's something that's really important to have that. So for me, I'm really grateful that we got that. People didn't like Nixon Falls. They didn't like the cheesiness of it, all this other stuff. I enjoyed it personally. It was different for me as a GH viewer, right? I, I didn't want to keep seeing Sunny like, cause you know, you see someone acting so hard for so many years, you kind of get tired of it. You know what I mean? I want to see a softer side. And I feel like ever since then, we've gotten a chance to see that with Sunny. Cause another thing I've even noticed with Sunny is the type of woman that he picks. And I've said this in multiple my videos, multiple videos. Where with Sonny, Sonny likes him a high class, high maintenance woman, if you notice that. Now, Carly became a high maintenance, high class woman after she got with Jax. That's when all the bougie with Carly started to kick in, when she owned the Metro Court and all that. And now they're bringing her back to her grittier days. You know what I'm saying? Now she's owning uh, Kelly's. She's back to that grittiness that she used to have, you know, because they stripped her down at the court right now that we notice. But Sonny has always liked him a high maintenance woman, Brenda. Alexis Davis, Kate Howard slash Connie Falconeri, Claire Walsh, Nina Reeves, Ava Jerome. That's always been the type of woman that Sonny wants because Sonny and Carly have a love for each other, but they're not in love with each other. I never believed they were in love with each other. And if any of you guys believe that Sonny and Carly were in love with each other, I honestly recommend you go see uh, Dr. Kevin Collins. Schedule an appointment, see if he has an opening. I know it's the holiday season, it gets a little busy, but see if you can schedule an opening. You know what I'm saying? Because the delusion might be a little real. Because we all know Sonny and Carly were never in love with each other. They loved each other, but they weren't in love. The love of, the love of, uh, of Carly's life was with Jason. And Sonny just liked him a nice, high maintenance woman. I believe love Sonny's life still, Brenda. That's how I feel. That, that's how I feel. You, I am the messenger, but you can shoot me at the same time. I have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. But I believe it's Brenda at the end of the day. But that's the woman that Sonny likes. And... He likes a woman that has power and status. Maybe that's something, maybe that's some childhood repressed trauma going on there. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sonny was a mobster with a heart of gold. But they gave him different layers with this. I connected with Sonny's character more. Because I felt like Sonny was hard. I didn't like the way he handled Claudia and that whole storyline. Didn't like the way he handled Ethan with the Christine storyline. But I get it. You're a father. You know. Thank goodness Luke was his dad. Because that was his only saving grace. Christina knew that. Still mad about Christina on that one. I'm still, <laughs> still a little upset. <laughs> but we have a recast Christina, so I'm willing to let it go. I, I let the sins fall the last actress play Christina. That's usually how it goes in soaps. But Sonny had a lot of, to me, more depth, more turnaround after Nixon Falls, personally. But I know some of you guys do disagree, but I think Maurice Bernard realized he needs to play something different. He knows he still has to give you that gritty Sonny, but he wants a different kind of Sonny because he is acting in this role. And when you're acting in a role and you're playing something over and over and over again, it kind of affects you. That's why you'll notice a lot of spiritual people say, act as if you already have it or act as if this. And what, what you practice, you become. You know, you, you, you turn into what you tune into. I'm sure you guys have heard that stuff. So you got to be mindful of that. And I think that's what Maurice Bernard is trying to Michael. He still has to give the fans what they want, but he's also trying to acknowledge, like, I don't want to play this dark character anymore because it's affecting me. And he does have a mental health disorder that he is struggling with himself. Not struggling, but he's, that he's managing right now in real life. You don't even know how that's triggering him on a, on a real level surface. But I'm not going to go there with all that. That's just, my, that's just my assessment on that. That's just my assessment. But I feel like Sonny is actually a better character now than he ever was. I really do. I really do, and I really connected with him. And as I was writing this paper, I noticed I was writing Sonny in such a positive way, right? Because Sonny's technically the client, and so you want to see the client with a positive, unconditional regard, right? But I just liked how they've written Sonny as of recently. It's just really nice. It, it's, it's, it's refreshing for me. You know what I mean? And most GH viewers are usually used to... Um, they're used to the actions... Mm -hmm the action-packed episodes, like when Carly, even before she met Jack, she was, you know, having spaghetti and gunshots for dinner when she was with Alcazar and Sonny and all these different folks and these characters she got aligned with. But when she got with Jack, she became very bougie. If you notice that, once after Jackson Fisher, Carly became very bougie. 
You know what I'm saying? She's still not my world, but she was very bougie. I kind of like that a little bit. People felt like that was a deviation of who Carly really was, but I liked it. I appreciated it. I appreciate it. But again, that's the only Carly I knew in the beginning. When I first started watching GH, that was a Carly that I became familiar with, actually. But for me, like I said, I liked how with Sunny, they gave us all these different connections and these new plots because with soaps, I don't always feel like you have to pull storylines out the wazoo. You can connect and stuff that's art in the past. And they did that with his dad and all his Alzheimer's storyline and then him going to Nixon Falls. Anyways, guys, that is my quick character analysis of Sonny Corinthos. I hope that was quick enough. Anyways, guys, um, that is my video. Like I said, first semester of grad school is done. Whoa, 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 whoa. Still working on research right now during the break. But um, anyways, guys, that is my video. This has been Soap Sanctuary, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.